afternoon. I'm LaCroy Meadows, member of the CMC Board of Trustees and the Franklin County Director of OSU Extension. It's great to see everyone today. Today, to meet the candidates for Columbus City Council event continues CMC's political season, which is sponsored by Hannah News and the Ohio Farm Bureau Federation. Please help me thank them for their support. Questions today will be submitted in writing. You will find a piece of paper in your form flyer for this. Please include your name and your question. Members of CMC's program committee will begin to collect them about midway through the discussion. Questions will be selected for content and relevance and read aloud by our program committee volunteers during our Q&A portion. Now, let's get right to our program. Allow me to introduce our candidates today. In alphabetical order, we have Elizabeth Brown, Shannon Harden, Zach Klein, Jaisa Page, John Rush, Bessa Shira, Michael Stinziano, Ebra Masal. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Candidate Demetrius Stanley, who had committed to participate, canceled yesterday. Our host and moderator today has personally interviewed each of these candidates, and over the years, he has probably attended more Monday night city council meetings than the council members themselves. <laughs> Please welcome the founder and publisher of Columbus Underground and the Metropreneur, Walker Evans. <laughs> Walker, the stage is yours. Thanks, LaCorey. I, um, I'm not always present at the council meetings, but I have tuned in quite a few times uh, through CTV on my laptop. Um, it's always really interesting to, to tune in and watch and find out what's going on in the city, uh, even if it doesn't have the raw entertainment value of the fantasy worlds of uh, The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones <laughs> or the ongoing presidential debates. Um, but it's, it's fun, fun to watch. Um, as always, big thanks to Jane Scott, all of the staff, uh, board, and volunteers at the Columbus Metropolitan Club and their sponsors for having me here today. Um, I'm always excited to come in and moderate uh, these great discussions, and I'm, I'm really passionate about civics and governance on the local level. Um, I always hesitate to call it politics because at the, at the local level, it's really more about creating solutions to have everybody in the community live you know, their lives to their fullest potential. Um, over the course of this nearly completed election season, only four more days, uh, I'm proud to say that, uh, to my knowledge, Columbus Underground is the only local media outlet to cover uh, or to, to interview every single one of the candidates from both parties as well as the write-in candidates in long form uh, format. Uh, a lot of the candidates up here we've even interviewed twice, once back during the May primaries, and then again more recently during the general election. So. Uh, today we're going to move pretty quickly through uh, sort of a speed round of, of interviews, keep going with these questions and answers, but I wanted to mention, you know, if you'd love to, to read more about them, check out the, the full interviews on ColumbusUnderground.com. So with that being said, let's move straight into the lightning round. Um, we're going to give each candidate 60 seconds, no more, no less, to give a quick introduction about themselves, make a brief opening remark, and a quick summary of their qualifications. So we're going to go alphabetical order. Starting with Elizabeth. Great. Thank you so much for having me here today, having all of us here today, to CMC for the incredible forum that you provide on a weekly basis uh, for our community to dissect really critical issues. I'm Elizabeth Brown. I'm running for Columbus City Council because I believe in the tremendous potential of our city. Um, moving forward. We have strong economic and growth factors, and we really have a unique collaborative way in which leaders in our city approach solving problems. My background is in nonprofit experience and economic development. I most recently was working in the mayor's administration doing economic development work. It's these experiences that I hope to bring to city council because I understand what it means to create good paying jobs that help sustain a strong middle class. I also understand um, what poverty looks like in this city and it will be uh, my mission to make sure that the zip code a child is born into in this city is never the determining factor for what kind of future he or she can dream of. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon. My name is Shannon Harden, and it's an honor to be here uh, with the CMC for hosting this uh, very important conversation. Thank you, Walker, uh, for moderating today. 
I'm really excited about this moment in time in Columbus history. We have the opportunity to choose the direction that we want to go in, um, where we all come together and we work together. Columbus has always done better when we partnered and worked together. So uh, I've really enjoyed and I'm really excited about the direction of our city running with this amazing team of Elizabeth Brown, Zach Klein, Jiza Page, and Mike Stenziano. Uh, when we think about the future of Columbus, we think about transportation, we think about small business opportunities, we think about our neighborhoods and making sure that each uh, community has the things that they need to move forward. I believe working together, uh, working with our new mayor, we will uh, have those opportunities to continue to move our city forward. Look forward to taking any questions uh, and thank you for having me. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zach Klein. Uh, member of Columbus City Council, and I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm nervous because my mom and dad are here. Uh, and my mom texted me this morning and said that she's here to gauge how well I've improved in my debating skills since mock trial in high school. So the, pres the pressure is on. Uh, it's been a pleasure serving on uh, the Columbus City Council with uh, uh, the great colleagues and team that I have, and certainly with Mayor Coleman over the past five years. And I look at the work that uh, we have done in this city over the past uh, five years, whether it's the lowest unemployment rate in the Midwest, uh, maintaining our AAA bond rating, which by the way, we're the largest city in the United States to have that, uh, creating, attracting, or retaining 29,000 jobs. Uh, that is all done with the partnership of many people in this room. Uh, and we certainly have more work to do, but I know it's through collaborative spirit and through those partnerships that we can tackle infant mortality to ensure, as my friend Elizabeth Brown said, that zip code doesn't dictate future, that we can build affordable housing units for everyone, and we can ensure that everyone has, a, all children have universal pre-K uh, so that they have a strong building block and foundation for an education. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank Jane and the CMC for hosting us today, and also to thank you all for coming and taking time out of your busy day to listen to us and engage with us. I know we have a large group. This is our last forum, and we're excited, and just really appreciate your patience and your listening ears. Again, my name is Jiza Page, and the easiest way to remember my name is that it rhymes with Liza, but it has a J and an extra A. Sometimes people look at it and they're like, what does that say? And again, it's Jiza. I am so happy to be on council. I was appointed in January of this year. I was born and raised in this city, and I've seen how our city has grown. I've seen our momentum, and I want to continue to be a part of it. Prior to joining council, I spent four years in the Columbus City Attorney's Office, working in our neighborhoods, working with the vacant and abandoned houses, with drug houses. I was able to close and demolish Motel One. And I want to take those experiences, the relationships that I have within the community to city council and continue to serve the residents of this great city. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is John Rush, and uh, you know, I have to say it's over to this camp, this is my first time running for elected office, and it has been extremely humbling and an honor to be able to run uh, alongside all of the candidates that are up here this evening. As a city, we have produced a lot of talent, caliber, expertise, passion, innovation, and that has been exciting to be a part of, and we have a lot to be thankful for. Columbus Underground, the work that you're doing, Walker, the passion and energy that you bring uh, is a f breath of fresh air uh, in our city, I believe. My name is John Rush. I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. I've spent my career uh, building businesses that provide employment for individuals that are coming out of challenging backgrounds, such as substance abuse, prior incarceration, uh, human trafficking, et cetera. And I want to bring the experience that I've had on serving over 25 nonprofit boards, running three separate businesses to the city of Columbus so that we be be can become the Silicon Valley of social enterprise. Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you. It's an honor to be here. My name is Bessa Shera. Um, it's very interesting to be here because I've been wanting to be a member for so long, and the first time I come here, I'm actually speaking to you and with you. So the one thing I want to tell you is I apologize if my face is on your butter. Um, it's on your table. So um, I am a first-generation American. 
I came to the United States to go to college and went to engineering school at Wright State University. I made the American dream happen here in Columbus, Ohio. I was able to buy a home, and I'm very excited about that, sold it, and so forth. But my biggest accomplishment is my daughter. Um, she was born at 28 weeks and three days at one pound, five ounces. So when Zach sp speaks about infant mortality here in Columbus, Ohio, it's a big deal and something that we really need to approach um, very, very seriously. I'm excited to be here and look forward to your questions. Thank you. Again. Uh my name is Ibrahim Asso, and I'm looking forward to uh, having a wonderful conversation here. As, uh, as Hardin said, this is a truly historic election year, with me and Bessa being the first new Americans in the city of Columbus to make the November ballot. Um, he is not wrong when he says that this election is both historic and important. And so what I represent, as well as Bessa, is that we represent a whole new population of new Americans that are coming here, that are business owners, part of the workforce, and we want to be able to advocate on their behalf because they make up a, uh, a really good uh, portion of our, of our city. And that is a pool of potential that we're not tapping into. I'm a small business owner. I recently started a, um, a startup called the Millennial Partner Group, focusing on the talent that our millennials have, because too often do we import jobs and not create them here. And I want to be able to uh, take the experiences that I've had with nonprofit work, working at the State House, to be able to create more opportunities here, give the people tools that they need uh, in our neglected neighborhoods. And I look forward to doing that. So thank you. Well, thank you all for the opportunity to be here and for us to have this wonderful forum. I'm Michael Stenziano. A uh, distinction I get is having the longest name on the ballot on Tuesday, uh, so that helps be memorable. Uh, I'm very fortunate. I, you know, born and raised in Columbus and, and got to see firsthand uh, public service. Uh, Dad's actually in the audience, and I got to see with my parents uh, just how important a role public service can play in people's lives, improving our community, and, and making a difference. And so that's why uh, running for Columbus City Council uh, was so important at this time. That's the first time in 16 years Mayor Coleman's name isn't going to be on the ballot. Uh, we are going to have a new president of council and we're going to have a, a change. The city is going to continue to grow and evolve and to be able to be part of a wonderful team and, and part of a, the council that's going to shape that uh, was an opportunity I was very excited by. Uh, I'm going to council to be your voice. Uh, anytime I can be help or service, if there's an issue, question, or concern, I want you to feel comfortable reaching out to my office. Call me anytime. 219-9224 is my cell phone and look forward to answering your questions. Cool. I think everybody stuck to that like 60 second rule pretty well for the most part. Um, I really like that. Let, let's keep that going. I, I want to get through as much information with everyone as possible. So rapid fire responses. I'm going to keep going down the list. Um, Elizabeth, you, uh, you probably could have been appointed to city council in September um, and could be running as a one month incumbent right now. But you, uh, you decided not to do that. Can you tell us a little bit why, uh, a little bit about why you opted out of that process for the first time in 18 years that someone has not taken the appointment route? Sure. Um, I was nominated to the ballot on August 10th. Um, would have had to put in my application for an appointment um, later that month. And fundamentally, I don't think it's very fair for a candidate on the ballot to uh, be chosen, right? I'm a, I was a candidate first, and I think that that um, doesn't, doesn't seem fair. So I have been campaigning to talk to the voters and to ask them for their vote, and that seemed like the best way to go about it. Also, um, at the time I was appointed, I was seven months pregnant. I am thir 13 days from having my, um, my daughter. Uh, my husband's here, too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I had a lot going on, um, <laughs> and I, I don't think I would have been able to fit um, new council member in there as well. I really wanted to focus on the campaign and on being a, a mom with my husband. Great. Cool. Thanks. Uh, Shannon, you're um, in your appointed position on city council. You chair the transportation committee. Uh, I can't leave the podium today without asking, are we going to build some form of rail transportation? <laughs> Streetcar, light rail, whatever, you know, in, in the future. Uh, what's, what's your take on that? So I'm very, um, that's one I'm really excited about uh, this committee that I chair, public service and transportation. When we talk about the future of Columbus, transportation is going to be pivotal in how we grow. Uh, 
But I, as a politician, as a city, I don't want to be so prescriptive in what type of transportation that is. I think that we need to convene a conversation where we have everybody at the table uh, to see uh, uh, what works for Columbus, what wouldn't work, um, how much that's going to cost, and how we're going to pay for it. But I do know that we have to make an investment in the future of our city. And for us to continue to grow, we're going to have to have this conversation. So right now, when I'm out, there's a lot of consensus consensus that we have to do something. I think the next step is putting some of those somethings on paper and so we can really take a, uh, a hard look at what we're talking about. But investing in the future of infrastructure is, is critically important to how we move forward. And so I think that is kind of an answer. I, I yeah. do, yeah. <laughs> Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, Zach, the, uh, the dispatch in August named you as the likely successor as city council president. Um, not to play too much into speculation, but with a lot of uh, turnover and role changes happening, regardless of who gets elected, um, what do you think that's going to do in for, as far as uh, impacting the priorities of council moving forward? Well, I, I think that uh, that's very crystal ball-like, and, and that's up for the caucus to decide, frankly, and it's up for the caucus to decide for the seven members of council that are going to be there in January. Uh, so my priority is to ensure that the Democratic slate uh, that includes me, Elizabeth Brown, Michael Stenziano, Jaisa Page, uh, and Shannon Harden get across the finish line so that we continue the work that Mike Coleman has done and we continue the, the next chapters of the city of Columbus and the momentum that we have in this city, which is terrific, and the partnership and the collaborative spirit that has made us successful. Great. Thanks. It's a good reading of the crystal ball. I'll, I'll take that as an answer. Um, Jaiza, uh, in your current uh, appointed position on city council, you chair the education committee. Um, while city council doesn't have direct oversight of the city of Columbus school system, what kind of uh, support would you say that council can provide in uh, shaping the role of improving the education system uh, throughout the city? Thank you, Walker. That's a great question. And I'm just very personally passionate about education, and that was a great fit um, being assigned to that committee. And as a member of city council, I think that there are a lot of ways that we can continue to be supportive of our current educational system. One way is that we all want to continue to enforce pre-K education, and we are currently helping fund pre-K slots across the city of Columbus. And we want every four-year-old to be kindergarten ready, and that is one of our big initiatives. And also to continue to partner with the school board. They are our partners. Education is, you know, the crux of our neighborhoods, the crux of our community. And if we can continue to work together with them, have a platform across the city for the type of education we want our young people to receive, we will continue to be a great city. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. John, as you mentioned earlier, you've had a lot of success as an entrepreneur building social enterprises that not only uh, make money as a for-profit business, but benefit the community through specific causes. Um, you've said to me that you want to apply your expertise in those areas to city programs, um, but do you think that the bureaucracy built into government systems would limit your ability to, um, to pivot effectively as an entrepreneur from that kind of mindset? It's a great question. Um, yes and no. Um, I think part of the learning curve, frankly, for me, and this is where I would enjoy the collaborative nature of a city council where there's more than just one member, is figuring out how to strategically navigate the bureaucracy that does exist because it's a healthy bureaucracy because it provides checks and balances. And if anything could happen quickly, that could be a dangerous thing. Um, and so I think working in collaboration with my fellow city council members, with our new mayor, uh, and with the program directors within City Council, and then also uh, the Columbus Chamber of Human Services and other nonprofit organizations, we could put together a really cool strategic plan, also working in partnership with organizations like the Chamber of Commerce uh, here in our city, um, that would really allow us to be able to see more strategic partnerships between the public, nonprofit, and private sectors so that we could maximize the market interest in buying products and services that also are tied to a social cause. Great, right, thanks. Besa, uh, when we met a few months ago, you mentioned you know you're, you don't see yourself as really being a politician. You're not a career politician. Um, do you think your outsider status uh, is beneficial to you in your campaign, or has it been a hindrance because of a lack of political experience? Right. Thank you. Uh, great question. Um, so. For me specifically, when I look at city council, I don't look at it as a political position. It has become one, um, and that's rather disappointing for someone like me that comes from the private sector. But 
Um, I also don't view myself as any kind of outsider. I know Mike has spent his entire life in Columbus, so has John, so has Ibrahima. And so um, I, I don't think I'm much different in that point of view. My unique position is that of someone that has spent a great deal of time working in the private sector, small business and big businesses, to understand exactly what it's like to be in their position. What kind of practices can we implement in the city of Columbus to make it easier for us to do business with the city? And um, ideally, I, I would like us to become friendlier in our small and big business practices. Uh, we speak a lot about public-private partnerships. Those are our livelihood, folks. We need to put great emphasis. And to do that, we need someone that has, has spent enough time um, in the private sector to understand both worlds. I've also done a lot of work in public advocacy. I've worked very hard to end violence against women, human trafficking, as you know, our governor has great initiatives um, going on for that. So I am an outsider, but not really. And I look forward to collaborate with all the folks in this uh, great panel. Great, Thank thanks. you. Thanks. Um, Ibrahima, you, uh, as you said earlier, you know, you, you've made history as being one of the youngest new American candidates to win a primary race. And you're very proud to try and make history again uh, by, by winning in the general election. Can you talk a little bit more about um, your experiences and, and why your background makes you a good candidate to represent Columbus? I certainly will. Uh, so like, like you said, Walker, I am really proud to be able to have that narrative and be able to be part of that history uh, that Columbus shares as Columbus being the first city to elect in the state of Ohio um, a, a new American on Columbus City Council. And what I've done is that uh, the narrative that I have comes with a lot of experiences. Um, to working at the house, uh, being a uh, first generation college student, um, being able to start a business my own. Uh, when my mom came here uh, in 1996, she came with $10 to her name and had to work three jobs to be able to uh, start a business. And she didn't speak a, uh, a sentence of English. And so that is the success, uh, the success story that Columbus has to claim. And uh, I'm, that's what my narrative is. That is the resilience, hard work, and breaking barriers that I am a part of. And I'd be able to do all of that because I've been able to graduate from college, be able to not let my environment uh, define who I am. And being from the Far East side, uh, knowing the schools that I went to, the environment, the neighborhood that I come from, uh, too many people are defined by their environment. And I want to be able to leave from there, do better, come back and fix those so we're able to be a city that gives a lot more opportunities to people uh, that simply don't have it. And so I'm qualified to be able to do that because I understand the realities and the circumstances that people have to go through, uh, from organizing back to school drives, uh, volunteering with uh, the Mid Ohio Food Bank to uh, feed families. Um, I understand what people in need look like because I have been there. And so what I want to be able to do is go back to those people and make sure that we, as a city, give them what they need so they can grow. Because if we're only as strong, as stable families uh, that are able to give back to their city. Because if people live here, they're investing in our city. And we have to be able to make the city a city worth investing in. And that's what I want to be able to do. Great. Th thanks. Uh, Michael, you, uh, you beat me a little bit to one of the questions I really wanted uh, to talk to you about. My phone number? <laughs> yes. Your I wanted your phone number. Can, can we text you? Absolutely. All right. That was my question. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's been one of your defining characteristics, I think, as a representative uh, you know, for the, the state government is your ongoing commitment to hosting those community office hours, your accessibility. Um, and it sounds like you plan to continue that if elected to council. Um, do you think that practice brings uh, a new era or level of accountability and transparency and access? Or, or is this a continuation of, of what's already there? So I think it already exists. I mean, every elected official runs their office differently. And it was clear to me uh, that 
you know, at the state house, the building can be intimidating. Parking isn't free. Uh, City Hall has that experience as well sometimes. And so I have found it to be very effective to be at a coffee shop, to be at a library, uh, to be at a community center and, and work and without an agenda uh, to have an opportunity and a forum in which people can feel comfortable, uh, approach me, approach my staff, uh, and raise an issue, question, concern, and we, and we can work on that. Uh, I think that is something uh, that I see happen. You know, City Council has done a good job of going out as a body uh, to different parts of the city and holding forums, having directors, departments there to be able to address questions immediately. Um, I don't think it's necessarily new, but it's something I, I found to be very successful in terms of being able to kind of deliver those services. And so something to your point, I look forward to continuing to do if I'm elected on Tuesday. Great, thanks. Feel pretty good? I mean, we're covering a lot of ground really fast. I think we can go through a whole other set of questions if we keep the, the one minute thing going. Um, Elizabeth, you, uh, before resigning, you were the, um, before resigning to run for council, you were the downtown development manager for the Department of Development. Um, you're also a board member with the Downtown Residents Association. We've spoken about downtown. I know you're very knowledgeable about downtown. Um, what about the rest of the city? Why, why are you a good candidate to represent the interests of people living all throughout Columbus? Great question. Um, I do want to shout out that my former bosses are here um, <laughs> at this, uh, Steve and Quentin. So, hi guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I, my background in the um, mayor's administration was um, doing downtown development work. And I, I worked on job creation and resident attraction. Downtown is, um, as the mayor likes to say, everyone's neighborhood. Um, I believe that strongly. I think that the growth we see in downtown is really critical to um, sustaining overall growth for the city. One thing I came to appreciate very well in my time in economic development is you know, the toolbox of incentives that we have um, is really critical when we're trying to lure jobs to the city or um, help a business that exists create more jobs. But what's honestly equally important is the, um, the, the pitch, right? The Columbus pitch, which is not defined by a set of numbers or tools, but is really defined by the spirit of the city and um, the way that we um, are attractive to millennials, because companies, when they are looking at Columbus, want to know that they're going to have a workforce, a talent pipeline for the next 30 years. It's not just about who's in the job market right now. And that pitch um, is really part of um, the growth that we're seeing downtown, um, the incredible, and the, and the nearby neighborhoods, the incredible um, reinvigoration of those neighborhoods. So I, I think it's, it's very important. At the same time, um, my passion, to be 100% frank, is fighting poverty. Um, it is, um, I'm very passionate about public service, and I'm very passionate about making sure that um, uh, the playing field is leveled uh, for any child that grows up in this city. Um, so I will um, cede nothing um, in my fight for neighborhoods to make sure that children born in less fortunate neighborhoods have the same kind of opportunities um, that children born in our nicer neighborhoods have. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Shannon, you told me a few months ago that you've, you've practically grown up in the political system here. Um, you know, your mother worked for both city council and the mayor's office. You told me that you remember doing uh, lit drops for local campaigns back when you were five or six years old. Um, do you think this gives you a unique perspective uh, for council, or does it make you too much of an insider in the political system? Well, no, I think that what it does is, um, it, like I said, Columbus works well because we work together. And so what I think that my experience, especially coming from the mayor's office where uh, I was the community affairs coordinator, I was out in the neighborhoods as much as I was downtown, making sure that Columbus's, the needs of our neighborhoods were are met. But I, what I did develop were great relationships. And I also want to recognize two of my colleagues on council that are here today, uh, Priscilla Tyson and Eileen Paley. Uh, but it's those relationships, it's, it's that partnership uh, is that uh, is one of the things that I think I bring to the table to make sure that we continue to work together to get things done. Um, I am still a boy who lives in Southfield, uh, and so uh, I don't feel like much of an insider. I am blessed by the experiences that I've had and the relationships that I've, I've gained over the years. Uh, but uh, I really, I'm just a kid who went to Columbus City Schools and had an opportunity and uh, had folks that poured into me. And so this is me uh, giving back to my community and serving, so. Great, thank you. Um, Zach, you're the uh, current chair of the council's Public Safety Committee, so you focused a lot this year on supporting uh, 
police force efforts through um, relationship development, technology upgrades like body cameras, which are gonna be deployed next year. Uh, so my question for you is what, what comes next after all of the changes that are going on this year? What's the next step for uh, improvements to safety? Well, I think generally the biggest challenge that Columbus is gonna be facing over the next couple months is, and this affects safety, it affects development, health, uh, finance, rec and parks, and that is uh, making sure that council works with the new mayor. Uh, making sure that we have a collaborative spirit in City Hall, uh, regardless of the new, whoever the new mayor is, and that whoever is on City Council, that we have our house in order at City Hall so that we can continue to invest in neighborhoods, uh, continue to bring out the plan for body cameras, and uh, increase minority participation in our uh, workforce, as well as in a reflection of our safety officers. Uh, and then, of course, uh, ensuring, I, I think, frankly, the big, another big obstacle is, is uh, the fact that we're 54,000 units short on affordable housing. Uh, and uh, as Jaisa mentioned, the work for universal pre-K and the work with uh, Celebrate One and infant mortality. None of that can be accomplished unless we're doing it together with everyone in this room as a partnership. But that starts at City Hall with the new council and a new mayor, and that'll be a priority for me uh, so that we're on the same page uh, and rowing in the same direction so that all of Columbus is successful. Great, thank you. Um, Jaiza, as, as uh, Zach just mentioned, um, you know, affordable housing and middle-class housing is, is something that's re you know, really important. Um, and you've mentioned to me in the past that that's something that's a passion of yours. Um, beyond uh, tax abatements or other financial incentives, is there something specific that council can do to work with private developers to ensure there's good workforce housing in high opportunity areas in Columbus? Yes, and I believe that we need to continue to be the voice and the advocate for our residents who need that middle income, that workforce housing. And we have the Affordable Housing Alliance that was recently started, and we are con going to continue to partner with them. They are the experts in this area. They are going to let us know how we as a city can continue to move forward and provide affordable housing to all of our residents. And then we, whoever is elected on November 3rd, will work with the, for with the Affordable Housing Alliance as well as the city departments that affect housing to make sure that, we, again, we are that voice, we are that advocate in going out to our private developers and encouraging them to provide this type of housing housing for our residents. Thank you. Uh, I just want to mention in a couple of minutes, we're going to move over to audience questions, about five minutes. Um, so we're going to speed through our final thoughts with, with everyone else. Um, John, you, uh, you told me a couple of months ago you described yourself as a Republicrat. 25% uh, D, 25% R, 50% I. Um, you're, you're running with the endorsement of the Republican Party, so how does this help or hinder your ability to campaign, and uh, why not just run as an independent if you see yourself primarily being an independent? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, <clears throat> so it doesn't help, frankly, in the city of Columbus to run as an endorsed candidate of the Republican Party. <laughs> I knew that slightly going into it. I've known it all the more as the last <laughs> nine months have transpired. So part of the answer to the question, and there is a fuller answer that we don't have time for, but part of it is strategic. Um, I love to build relationships with diversity. I love pursuing common ground with those that I perceive to be different than myself, and I love to communicate that value in general to the public, in my family, in my community, and in the city. And so for me, strategically, I thought if I could build relationships and build on relationships within the Republican Party to advocate for the issues that I'm most passionate about, especially leveraging business for social good, specifically employing individuals who've had challenges in their past, I could do so in such a way that over time we might see more collaboration between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. We live in a polarized society. And a passion of mine is to see the polarization decrease. So that's part of a very good question and a complicated question. That, that's a great short answer. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for not going on for 10 more minutes. <laughs> no, sure. uh, Besa, uh, you, you said earlier uh, you know, that combating homelessness uh, was a big uh, campaign platform for you. Um, can you tell us a little more about any sort of specific ideas, new ideas that you have that council could implement for uh, programs or, or even supporting nonprofits in combating uh, homelessness? Thank you. I'd like to answer John's question. <laughs> um, so it, it's, 
n not a secret that that has kind of been my main point throughout this entire uh, campaign for the folks that do pay attention um, to the election. Um, homelessness is a big deal here in Columbus. <laughs> I actually happened to visit the Ohio Homeless Foundation and it was eye-opening. I'd always know there was issues. Um, but for our food banks to be at their reserves, we all need to take a deep breath, okay? We're doing something wrong, folks. Ideally, what my suggestion and plan has been all along is a model that we practice today, and that's independent, uh, independent supportive housing. It would allow people to be able to get out of the system, get out of the crisis mode, that they live in and be able to think about uh, improving on their skill set, be able to bring their lives back from a very tough spot. Today, as we stand, we're only feeding into that idea that the homeless need shelter. And I think we need to look uh, further than that. And we need to look at providing a sort of uh, independence for folks and why not making them feel accountable for their lives. So that's that's, that's my big plan, which everybody already knows about. I want to expand on that. Thank cool. you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Um, Ibrahima, actually, similar question to, to John. You know, when we spoke a few months ago, um, you know, you, you mentioned that a lot of your political views don't necessarily align with the, the party that you're running under. Um, you know, do, do you feel this has been a hindrance for you about getting across a clear message of who you are as an individual? <laughs> uh, huh. That's, that is a very good question. And in, in my honest opinion, it has not. Uh, if anything, it has been a learning experience for me as well as people I talk to that tell them that I'm running for city council and I want to be able to be their voice. And nine out of 10 times they ask me, so what party are you with? And I tell them it's a nonpartisan race. And they're like, <laughs> so what party are you with? <laughs> <laughs> And so I, I have to be able to, uh, to own up to, to, to who I am. And I tell them I'm, I'm, endorsed, uh, I'm endorsed by the Republican Party, and this is who I am. And after a conversation about what I believe, where I come from, and what I plan to provide for them, they're able to, to look beyond party, because at the end of the day, when it comes to the city level, it's all about policy. It's all about how uh, this city does with the people that live in it. And it's how we deal with families that are suffering, uh, the one in seven kids that are going hungry in our city, the one in three families that live in poverty, the inching 20% homelessness that we have, uh, the level of concentration of, of poverty in certain neighborhoods. That's what actually matters. It doesn't matter what party you're with. And I tell people that. It doesn't matter what party I'm with. If you'd hold me accountable uh, for what I do, what I say, and, and uh, how I act at the end of the day, and that was, that's what matters, and we've been able to gain a lot of traction, uh, change a lot of hearts, and be able to educate people on, at the end of the day, it's all about what I do for you, not about who I represent. And people are understanding that. Now, not a lot of people do, but enough people do, and I mean, I'm able to go to sleep at night knowing that uh, I've been honest with myself and my conscience is clear. Th thanks a lot. Uh, Michael, final question on the panel. I'm going to give you an incredibly complex question with a real short answer uh, from you. Um, as, as a state representative, your, your district was comprised of a smaller section of central Ohio, but if elected to council, you'll represent the city uh, at large. Um, a lot of locals have called for a change to a district or ward-based system at city council. With your unique experience um, working under a district system right now, do you, do you feel that applying that model to the city could better allow for neighborhood representation? So the city of Columbus has over 200 neighborhoods. And so I haven't seen a model or a proposal that I feel captures what some of the individuals seeking uh, award system say they're going to be able to deliver on. Uh, at the same time, to your point at the state house, I've seen how districts are drawn. And it's also uh, concerning, uh, awfully concerning, uh, when you've got politicians doing it. You know, I gave my two-year-old son some crayons, and he drew a better map than what I saw earlier this week. <laughs> and, and, and so that remains a concern. You're going to have winners and losers. You're going to have people competing. I think it's an important part of a conversation. I think as our city grows, uh, where we're going to be, uh, how we make sure there's representation. But there's no better way uh, to affect that than elect good people that are going to be able to advocate on your behalf. It's the individuals more than the boundaries they represent or the uh, area. And so I think that's an important discussion that I I look forward to having a beyond Tuesday. Awesome. Thanks a lot. I, 
lots of great answers from everyone. I, I want to point out, like, we've got eight very individual individuals up here. So I'm, I'm really glad. Let's give everyone a round of applause because. <laughs> it's, it's just great to hear everything that they have to say. So I want to move on to the Q&A section. It is CMC's tradition to take audience questions. Today's questions were written in advance and selected by members of the Metropolitan Club Committee for appropriateness and balance. So let's proceed with the first question. Good afternoon. Our first question uh, this afternoon comes from Carol Newscomb. And Carol asks, what do you think is the most important issue City Council needs to address in 2016? And she underlined most important. Who wants to jump? Yeah. Start with me again? Sure, yeah, yeah, real, real quick. Darn yeah. B for a last name. <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> um, I appreciate the question. Thank you, Carol, uh, wherever you are. Um, I think the most important issue that council is facing um, this term is to help lay the groundwork for the kind of growth that we're going to see in our region over the next um, 25 years. We're projected to add um, 500,000 people over the next 35 years to our region. And that presents a unique set of challenges. Um, our Columbus is the 15th largest city in the country. And as we continue to grow, uh, we are more and more going to um, be able to seize the opportunities of a large urban center, but also really have to confront those challenges too. So for me, what that means in 2016 is, um, hate to be a broken record, but going back to um, the issue of poverty and how we're leveling the playing field for everyone in our city, um, how we're uh, building out economic prosperity that's broad-based, that works for every neighborhood, every small business, every resident of our city. Um, and that means um, affordable housing. Um, that means education. Um, and th those are the sorts of things that I, I think will really make a difference um, in people's lives who aren't given an advantage um, from the start. Great. Let's just keep going down the list. Yeah. Uh, well, quickly, I'll say affordable housing. Zach hit on it, and Jiza hit on it as well. Uh, the Affordable Housing Alliance is doing some really amazing work and has challenged us as a community to cut that 54,000 uh, deficit in terms of affordable housing in half over 10 years. So in 10 years, can we, as a community, come up with 27,000 housing units, 2,700 2, units a year? That's a huge challenge for uh, any city, but I believe if anybody can do it, it's Columbus. And so uh, getting folks into affordable housing, I think, is the one issue that I will be focused on and working with my colleagues. Zach? Certainly echo everything that uh, Elizabeth Brown and Shannon Harden said, but uh, I think it still goes back to that uh, partnership with the new mayor, uh, because those issues, as important as they are, and they're very, very important to the city of Columbus, uh, can't be addressed as effectively uh, as it should be if there's infighting within City Hall. And there's going to be a new council. We have uh, Council Member Paley, who's going to be successful running for judge. I'm confident of it. Uh, council, our Council President Ginther, who's, who's chosen to run for mayor and not for re-election. We're going to have new faces, and we're going to have a new mayor. And you think about transition for the President of the United States, transition for governor. Like, there's new department heads. There's new staff. There's going to be new staff at City Hall. We all need to be working on the same page. That doesn't mean rubber stamp, but that means uh, a professional attitude and relationship between council and the mayor so that we can tackle those important problems. Thanks. And really just echoing off of Councilman Klein, I think those relationships and how we review and vote on the budget for 2016, you're going to have a lot of new faces in city council. We are going to have a new mayor. And this is going to be the first year in a while that we see a lot of our shared funding from the state is cut. And we are going to have to continue to make sure that our budget is transparent, we're accountable to our residents, and that we are providing the same resources that we provide to all of our residents now in 2016. Thank you. I agree with Councilmember Klein and, and Councilmember Page. I think anytime you have a leadership change, uh, it's extremely complex, and that's going to be, to answer the question specifically, the biggest um, challenge. And I think that the new makeup of the City Council, the new mayor, I'm confident we'll be able to collaborate and work together. The one additional thought that, of course, I'd like to add is that part of that diversity will be the first Republican uh, council member on city council in more than 16 years. And so with your vote, thank you. 
Thank you. Um, great question. It's hard for me to um, emphasize just one, but I will do that. Uh, the, to me, the hardest part that we are still not looking at is, number one, transparency in our government. Today, as we stand, we're, we're facing a lot of challenges with um, ethical violations of all kinds of sort in council. Um, and I think we need to reform that. So contrary to what um, my fellow candidates were saying, I think new leadership will be ideal. I think a new fresh set of eyes will be absolutely what Columbus needs. Why? Because uh, like Elizabeth was saying, we're poised to growing a lot of growth. And it's not just going to be homogeneous. It's going to be a very diverse population. And so that goes into a lot of things, including the at-large system that we have today. So yes, I think our biggest challenge to Today in council and city government is transparency. Thanks. So, Carol, the, the from our perspective, I believe the biggest challenge the city of Columbus has uh, going into the next four years, and that's why this election is so important, is human welfare. Um, we can't be a city poised for growth and prosperity if we have too many people living on the streets, um, if we have too many kids going hungry, if we have two millennials. Uh, too many millennials going to other cities in order to be job creators there. If we have too many families living in poverty. So making sure that we deal with human welfare, raising the quality of life so we can be a city of, of, uh, of prosperity and growth and actually be honest in it and actually be proud of it is I think our biggest challenge. And how do we do that? By making sure we do all those subtopics, making sure that um, we transform uh, or tear down the blighted houses, put our homeless inside of them. Uh, it seems real easy, and it can be. We all have to do is make meaningful partnerships and make sure that we have plans ready to be able to have a budget fit for that and have people uh, be able to, to live properly. Uh, making sure that we work on our schools, we work with our school system to make sure uh, that they're able to feed the kids there. And when kids go home, they're also able to, uh, to be fed because just going to school and that is the only avenue that you have that a kid has to be able to um, have food, that is not a city that we can be proud of. And so human welfare, I think, Carol, is our biggest challenge and I plan to address that. Thanks a lot. Uh, so I think smart uh, and strategic investment in our neighborhoods is going to be our biggest challenge. I've sat down uh, with Councilwoman Tyson and talked about uh, the challenge the budget's going to be in the coming years. And, and I think we need, uh, as our council with the new mayor, uh, to be very smart. Uh, as Councilwoman Page pointed out, the state has uh, cut funding, cut funding, cut funding. And, and so it, it's going to be in paramount uh, and very important for, for the council uh, to be very smart, strategic, and be able to stretch every dollar. And I think that's going to be our biggest challenge because uh, we're going to do it as the city continues to grow. Thanks. This question is from Joylene Williams and she asks, what do you see as the ideal relationship between African American males and the police? It's a great question. Uh, I think it's one that as we've gone out and talked uh, with many community leaders and a lot of people on the doors and neighborhoods, that that relationship's one that has to continue to evolve. Uh, I think the Black Lives Matter movement has been very important to raise awareness and issues. Uh, but I also think we know we need to do a better job uh, with our police department to recruit more African American candidates. And, and that recruitment needs to start earlier than what we've done, uh, be able to express how important that role is, and have our police department be a little more reflective of our neighborhoods. It's something I've sat down with their police department, and they're very supportive of leading that change, and I think that's something that needs to continue to grow. So as a young black man myself, um, there are certain times that I've been profiled, and so it is, it is something that is real, and if you don't have the experience of it, you can't really be able to, uh, to tackle it. And um, unfortunately, people aren't talking about it enough to be able to actually tackle it effectively. So I feel like a diversified police force is the best way we can have cops that are able to relate to people that live in neighborhoods that they're supposed to protect. If you can relate to someone, you'll be comfortable with them. And so um, I feel like it goes with the new Americans as well. If you're able to understand how people are and what their traditions are, what their cultures are, what their faiths are, you're able to approach them a lot more. And so uh, it goes with the just a Somali woman that, was, uh, that wanted to be a police officer in our city. 
and that's something that we should be proud of, but she's barred because of our culture, of her culture. And so we should be a city that's flexible, open, and embracing of the diversity that we have. And so when it comes to either new Americans or, or, uh, or black men, we have to be able to relate to our police officers and a diversified, educated police force is what we, uh, what we need to be able to do that. Excellent, thank you. Um, so very quickly, I don't know what it's like to be racially profiled, but I have been a woman in engineering with an accent, so I can relate um, that way. I'll tell you this, I won't just tell you what I think, I'll tell you what we should be doing as well, and you'll hear a lot about what's been done and it's relatively very little. Um, our police has to look like us, first and foremost. Our police has to be there for our community. Um, the most important part that we face today, I think it's not just necessarily this specific tension between uh, black Americans and the police. There's also a lack of training in, uh, not only in Ohio, which by the way, we're 37th in the country for police training, FYI for folks that don't know that. Um, but also we need to train folks into when do we use deadly force? How do we use deadly force? So ideally what I'd like to do is appropriate a certain amount of funds to be looking into that um, specifically for our neighborhoods. So it's a big deal and I'm very excited that the question came up because I got an opportunity to tell you what I will do when I'm in council, thank you. Thanks. Let's continue to keep these very brief Real so we quick, just yeah. don't run too long. Extremely complicated question. It goes a lot deeper. Uh, Black-white relations uh, is a, a cultural challenge that we have a lot of discussion to still uh, walk through. I think very practically we need to invest in programs that encourage relationship building. I think we need to in invest in vocational training in neighborhoods where there is significant uh, underprivileged youth. Uh, and then the third, I believe that we need to take into consideration at least engage in conversation about uh, Citizens Re uh, Review Board. Thanks. Thank you, Doyleen. That's a great question. And in my opinion, the ideal relationship between African American males and the police department is one of a partnership and that both of them are working together to uplift their neighborhoods, uplift their community. There is open line of, of communication respect for each other and trust. And I believe in that partnership, we will see African-American communities continue to grow. Hi, Doyleen. Thanks for the question. Uh, you know, to build on what Councilmember Page said, I think it all boils down to mutual respect and understanding. Uh, yes, it was a great, great question. Um, you know, I think that it, it starts before the interaction between the police and the, the community. I think that especially when it comes to young boys of color, uh, we as a community have to uplift them and, and break down those barriers that would put them in the in, um, in the place where their first real interaction with the police is a negative one. Um, so a lot of the things that we've talked about in terms of uh, the relationship building, the engagement is very important, the make sure that the police, the police force is reflective of the community, but it's really how do we do that. And so we will continue to work um, uh, as council uh, with administration to, to encourage um, uh, more uh, diverse police force and engagement in the community. Um, the, thank you for the question. The, the ideal relationship is one of um, trust and community, and I, I really want to echo what um, Councilmember Page said, of partnership. Um, our safety forces and the people living in our community need to feel that trust between one another, among one another, if communities are going to be properly kept safe. And I think um, the responsibility that all of us have is to urge the conversation, prompt the conversation, and initiate the action around um, sol solving that, right? Where it doesn't exist, it's really incumbent upon us, along with other um, community leaders and safety force leaders, um, to come together and, and um, not pass the buck, but uh, actually find the solution. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the, the really great questions. Do, do we have time for the 30-second closing remarks? Let's, let's go down the list. Real, real, real brief closing remarks from all of our candidates. Okay, great. Liz. 
Um, thank you again for having me here today, and thank you to CMC for um, the forum that you create on a regular basis in our city. Um, what I want to leave you with um, is really uh, just the, the non-resume side of my um, experience and qualification for this job. I'm very passionate about public service. I believe that when government is on the side of people and we put people first, we can solve the real challenges of community. I'm inspired by that principle, and that's the principle that I'll live by on council. I'll be very brief. On November 3rd, please vote for Elizabeth Brown, Zach Klein, Jiza Page, Mike Cinziano, and Shannon Harden. Uh, we, this really, really is a good team, and a team that is committed to moving this community forward. Uh, we respectfully uh, ask for the opportunity to continue to work with each and every one of you uh, to invest in our neighborhoods and to uh, be a part of this growth. Thank you. Thank you to the CMC. Uh, on November 3rd, I respectfully ask uh, for your vote to continue the work that we've done together uh, in the city, and as well as the vote is with the rest of the Democratic team, and that's Elizabeth Brown, Shannon Harden, Jiza Page, and Michael Stenziano. Thank you. Saying all of our names takes like five seconds. So again, <laughs> this has been a great opportunity, a wonderful forum. I ask for your support of our entire team. Thank you for your time. Again, your patience. We have a long panel. And congratulations to all the panelists. We've done a lot of great work together and want to continue to work on behalf of the residents of Columbus. Uh, vote John Rush on November 3rd. Uh, no. I, as a veteran of the United States Marine Corps, as a social entrepreneur who's sat on a number of nonprofit boards, as an individual who has been able to employ over 1,500 returning citizens over the last two decades, uh, educational background, graduate degrees in urban studies, theology, philosophy, history, and an MBA from Northwestern, I'd love to bring my education and my experience to city council, and that's why I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so since everybody's saying their name, vote Bessa Shira. Um, very quickly, uh, I want to echo everybody, and especially Jaiza, thank you. You all have been outstanding throughout this time, and thank you to the CMC. Um, it's important to me. This election is uh, very important. You talked about being a Republican in this race. I was brave enough for, um, for the battle, and uh, uh, unquote battle. And I think it's very important that you know that we're all going to work together regardless. We have a deep connection to Columbus, and uh, it's teamwork. Thank you. So again, my name is Ibrahim Masoud, last name SOW, and I humbly ask for uh, your vote, as well as a vote for Bessashara and John Rush. Uh, my plan is to make, city, make Columbus the best city that it can be, with a vision of making sure that the city works for every family and every small business in every neighborhood. And with my experiences in, in nonprofit and state government, uh, I, I can, we can make that happen. And so I look forward to making sure uh, that my investment in the city um, yields what um, all the other families have. So thank you. So thank you all for taking the time on a Friday. Uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, prior to serving in the legislature, I got to be director of the Board of Elections. If you're ever behind a car that has the license plate, go vote. That's me. Uh, I encourage you to take advantage, uh, learn about the candidates, not only uh, what you heard today, uh, but from the League of Women Voters, and, and learn what we stand for. It's an exciting time for the city, and I couldn't be more proud uh, to be running with such a wonderful team of Elizabeth Brown, uh, Zach Klein, Jiza Page, Shannon Harden. Uh, we respectfully ask for your vote, and thank you all for being here. What a great conversation. I think I've got names I recorded in my head now. So <laughs> um, thank you to each of you who are here. I hope that you all enjoyed today's forum. We encourage you to continue the conversation in the lobby with coffee and cookies. Um, remember that you can view and share all of our forums on CTV Columbus Television on WOSU and PBS affiliates statewide through the Ohio Channel, and anytime on CMC's website via YouTube. Let's thank our sponsors, Hannah News, Ohio Farm Bureau Federation, each of our candidates, and Walker Evans. And thanks to all of you for being here. We look forward to seeing you at the Columbus Metropolitan Club again soon. Thank you.